So let's get started by creating a new React application. So I have my terminal open and I'm in a Visual Studio project, which is where I'm going to store this. So I'll create our application using npx create react app and I'll call it go movies. So that will create our application, which will take a little while. Okay, so our project is installed. Now I'll start up Visual Studio Code. And I'll close this window and browse to the folder I just created, which is in Visual Studio Projects, and I called it Go Movies. There. So I'll open that. Now, there's a bunch of files in our source folder that I don't need. So I don't need Report Web Vitals, or Setup Tests, or Logo, and App Test, and I'm going to get rid of App CSS as well. I don't need those. So I'll simply delete those, move to Trash, and let me go to our index.js file, and I'll get rid of this line because I don't need it. And I'll get rid of this because I don't need it. We're going to start with a really simple application. So that looks about right. Now let's go to app.js. I'm going to get rid of this import to a logo because I don't need that. And I'll delete all of this and replace it with what I want in a moment. Now let's put some HTML in here. So this is going to be a really simple application. And I'm going to use Bootstrap once again, but this time I'll just import it into my index.html file right here. Let's get rid of all these comments because we don't need this. And I'll call this Go Watch Movies, just to change the title. Okay, and I'll get rid of these. Leave the ID root there because I need that and get rid of this comment. Okay, now I want to add Bootstrap to this, so I'll go to my web browser and let's go get the CDN link for Bootstrap. Get bootstrap.com, get started. I'm not going to import it using NPM this time, I'll just import it using CSS because I don't do that very often and it's nice for a change. So I copy the link and I go back to Visual Studio Code and I'll put that in right here. There, right, now I have access to Bootstrap. So let's save this and close that and let's get started on our application. So what I'm going to do is create a very simple layout and I'm not going to put much effort into making it pretty right now. I just want to get it functional. So let's create a div class name equals container, which is the bootstrap container. And inside of that, I'll put a row div class name equals row with a lowercase r. And inside of that, I'll just put a title, h1, and I'll give it a little margin on the top. Class name equals margin top, say, 3. And then I'll put in a title, go watch a movie, which isn't a very good title, but it's what I have to work with right now. And now I'll put a horizontal rule in. And again, I'll give that a little bit of space. Class name equals, say, mb-3 margin of three on the bottom. Okay, so there's our first row. That's just the title row. Now we'll put our content in area in. div class name equals row. And I'll put in a div with a class name equals say call md2, just the narrow column on the left hand side. And this is going to be where I'll store our navigation. Okay, and then I'll just put another empty column in. Div class name equals call md10, the other 10 of our 12 available columns. And in that will be where we actually put the content that we want to display when we click on links in the left hand column. Okay, so that's enough to get started with that. So that's all this is going to do. Now, here's the thing I could, if I wanted to, in my navigation area, put something like this in. I could put ul or put a nav, nav tag in first, which you're supposed to. And I put ul class name equals list dash group, which is Bootstrap's nicely formatted list. And then put a couple of li's in there. Say li 
class name equals list group item. And in that I could put a link, say a href equals, let's say we're going to link to the home, like that. And then I could just put home. Fine. Now I'll copy this and paste it twice, just to give two more links and modify them after the fact. So this one would be, say, movies, a list of movies. And I'll put here the title movies. And down here I'll have, instead of movies, I will have admin. And I'll call this manage catalog, like that. Fine. Now, if I was to actually try to run this right now, and I can do that. Let's see if I have everything right. npm start. Okay, I do have one mistake. That's app CSS shouldn't be here, so I'll just get rid of that. Okay, and try this again, and go back, and reload this. There it is. There's fun. That's our layout. So this will be our navigation. This is where we're going to display the content related to a given navigation item. But how do I make these links work? I mean, slash movies, slash admin, how do I route that to whatever I want to display? Well, that's a bit of a problem because so far we know how to display components on a page, but we don't know how to link to a particular component or have a link tied to a particular component. And that's where this package comes in, the React Router. This is a very, very popular and widely used add-on for React that allows us to actually link to different things, to do exactly what we want to do. So this is basically a collection of navigation components that allow us to very quickly and very easily create links in our React application and route to those. So we're going to use that package. So I'll switch back to my IDE and I'll open a new terminal window. And let's install that component. And you do that very quickly. npm install react router DOM. So that will install it for us. So it's installed. And now, how do I use this? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. First of all, let's import some things that we know we're going to need in our app.js. So back on line one, I'm going to import React, which I'm definitely going to be using. And I'm also going to import Fragment, which I'll probably be using. And if not, I'll remove it after the fact from React. OK. Now I want to use the router. Now I'm going to import. And there are two potential routers that we can use from uh, React Router DOM. There's the browser router and there's the hash router. So let's use browser router as router, just an alias. And I'm also going to import a few other things. Switch, root, and link. And those are all going to come from the package we just installed from React Router DOM, like that. Okay, now inside of our app function here, where I have function app, I'm going to actually change this to, just to make it a little simpler, export default function app. Okay, which means I don't need this line down here. Just a little cleaner. When we're going to use this router, the very first thing you have to bear in mind is that everything you want to be routed must be wrapped in this tag router with a capital R. And I'll take the closing tag and I'll move that way down to the very bottom of this particular JSX. Okay, so we have that. The second thing to bear in mind is that you don't write links like AAHREF. You don't write them like this. Instead, you do something like this. So I'll leave that there for right now and we'll get rid of it in a moment. You use this syntax, link, which is converted to the appropriate link after the fact. And I want to link this to home, which is slash, okay? And then I put home. That's how you create links. So let's copy this and just paste it and fix the other two. So I'll paste it here and I'll paste it here. And I want this to link to movies, which will be our list of available movies, which we're going to get from our go back end before we're done, but not in this lecture. And this one will go to admin. I'll delete that and call this manage catalog like that. 
Now, where do I want these links to be? Better fix that. ADMIN. There. Down here in the column where I'm going to have the main content for my site, I'm going to use another React router directive called switch. And it works just like a switch statement. So it has an opening and closing tag. And I'm going to say root path equals slash movies, like that. And that's going to call movies, which doesn't exist yet, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now I'll copy this for our other two paths and paste them in. Paste and paste. And the second one isn't going to go to movies, it's going to go to admin. And it will call and render the component admin. And the last one will be our home route. And that will go to home. Okay, so now I have to have something that will actually take the place of these little tags. So I can do that pretty easily. For right now, just to get it up and running, let's just add some functions. So I'll add a function called, and these are just standard functions, and they're just placeholders for right now. I'll call one home, and it will just return h2 home. And then I'll copy this and create two more. One for movies and one for admin. Movies and movies. And I'll call this one admin. And the title will be manage catalog. Okay. So let's open our terminal and see if everything is compiling the way it's supposed to. So I'll switch to the one that says node. Okay, so fragment is undefined but never used. That's fine. We'll be using it before too long. So it compiled. That's good. Let's close this and switch to our browser right here. So now when I click on movies, this says movies. And now when I say manage catalog, this manages the catalog. That is an excellent start. So if we go back and look at this, let's just go through how this is working again. So index.js does nothing more than render the app component. App.js right here, and this is a simple default function that exports some HTML, some JSX, which is then changed into HTML. But this package is actually using browser router from the React router DOM, okay? And inside of that, of course, we have to wrap everything we want to be routed in our router tag and then we just define our links using this syntax, link to whatever path name you want to link to. Down here, where we want the content to show up, we have our switch statement, and we list all of our possible routes, and there are only three. Now this is using browser routing. So if we go back to our web browser and look at this, and look at the URL, if I go right to the home, it's just the bare URL. If I click movies, it changes to slash movies. But let me go back to home. And come back here and change this to hash router and save the changes and go back to our web browser okay it's reloaded but look at the URL it's changed to localhost 3000 slash hash slash and when I click on movies it goes to slash hash slash movies in the same way you can probably guess what this one is going to be it ends with admin now this is using hash routing. Now this is far and away the easiest way to build and deploy a React app because it requires no configuration of the web server. If I go back and use this instead, if I say change this back to browser router like that and save it and go back to my web browser, now when I go to home it actually would require that I make some changes to whatever web server I'm deploying this on. And it's really straightforward to do it. You can configure Apache or Nginx or Caddy or your favorite web server. There are lots of examples for how to configure a given web server for this kind of routing. But right now I'm going to leave it back as hash router just because I like that right now. And it doesn't matter which one we can use. You can see how easy it is to change from one to the other. Okay, so we have an application that's running right now, and it does have three stub functions, and all of these will go away and be changed to something more appropriate as we go on. But at the moment, we have an application 
we have a default web page and we have three active links. So in the next lecture, we'll see how to configure those links to render an actual React component instead of just this simple return and then a little tiny bit of JSX.